Warriors return to the O'Connell Center after a seven-game road swing to battle the 18th-ranked Commodores. It's Vanderbilt and Florida next on Sports Channel. Center on the campus of the University of Florida in Gainesville. Sports Channel presents Florida Gator basketball. Today, it's the Gators against the Commodores of Vanderbilt. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Vitell, along with Bill Koss, welcoming you back to the O'Connell Center and our continuing coverage of the Gator basketball season. Florida's been on the road for a month, but they're back home today to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. And, Bill, for this basketball team, a long road trip, but what a great way to end it in Tallahassee and Auburn. Well, Larry, the Gators are starting to play the way Coach Kruger thought they could play at the beginning of the year. They're coming out and playing hard on defense, getting the basketball in turnover situations, and they're making sure on the offensive end of each possession. The Gators 7-3 Coming into this game and if you want to think about wins and losses playing well playing poorly this team still revolves around senior Stacy Poole. Stacy Poole is the key he's been the key from the first day and he got out uh, to a good start and then went 16 for 56 from the field coach Kruger put him on the bench he came back and he's now 24 of his last 45 so he's really playing well. Another guy who got put on the bench is Scott Stewart he had to sit out a few games not starting them back as a starter at point guard and playing very well. well you gotta love Scott Stewart because he's the point guard and he comes out and gives you 110 percent every night those are big games these last three games and the florida gators are getting leadership from their seniors scotty stewart and stacy pool now for the vanderbilt commodores they're ranked 18th in the country they are 11 and 2 they just had a 10 game winning streak snap last year this team was 15 up 15 down but a big difference this time around the addition of billy mccaffrey from duke everything starts with the point guard when you've got a guy at the point that can get it done and they've got a good one he comes out there every night and gives Gives him 19 points a game, and he's doing a super job shooting the basketball. And if you're going to do well going on the road for a Billy McCaffrey, why not continue the transfer route? And he goes up to Indiana and gets one of Bob Knight's players as well. Boy, do you like the guy inside. He's a meat eater. He comes to play and bangs you pretty good. He's a good shooter, and he's a guy that Bobby Knight loved inside because of how hard he played, and he's doing it for Vanderbilt. Chris Lawson and Billy McCaffrey, two transfers we'll keep an eye on for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Vandy without a loss in the SEC. They're 1-0, as are the Florida Gators. A great matchup. Maybe a sellout here in the O-Dome. We're expecting a big crowd. We'll be right back. Bill will talk with Coach Lon Kruger. But first, these words on Sports Channel. Sports Channel's coverage of Florida Gator basketball is brought to you by First Union. When it comes to service, everything matters. By Osmos Pressure Treated Pine, only from Great Southern Wood. By Dairy Farmers Incorporated. Milk, it does a body good. And by Sears Home Improvements. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting new videotape. This is the professional instructional video that gets results. See how this group of youngsters added an amazing six miles per hour to their arm strength while vastly improving their running speed and defensive skills in just a few weeks of work. Baseball World's revolutionary new video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same defensive drills used by Baseball World's back-to-back 1990-91 AAU National Championship teams. Lou Pavlovich Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best offensive drill video ever produced. San Diego Padres Major League Superstar Fred McGriff agrees. I'm so impressed with the instructional videos by Coach Amansky that I've given them my full endorsement. When you watch them, you'll know why. Baseball World's defensive drill video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels and improves coaches' practice organization. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-535-1700. Call now and we'll ship today. Fort shifting, moving right in. The shot scores! Now you can learn superstar hockey skill. Hockey with Roger Nielsen from Atlanta's video. Roger Nielsen has brought together Dennis Savard, Mike Gartner, Ron Francis, Greg Mills, Doug Wilson, and Ray Bork to improve your game. You'll learn the fundamentals of puck handling and control. 
the art of deking, passing and receiving like the pros, superstar shooting skills. There's even a detailed section on breakouts and set plays that create breakaway opportunity. Hockey with Roger Nielsen, with freeze frame and slow-mo replay, plus spectacular highlights of the stars in action, and especially priced at just $19.99. Call toll-free 1-800-874-3100 or send check or money order for $19.99 for each video plus $4.50 shipping and handling to Hockey with Roger Nielsen, P.O. Box 2345-C, Grand Central Station, New York, New York. Welcome back to the Stephen O'Connell Activity Center where this afternoon the Florida basketball team is back at home. It's been exactly one month, 31 calendar days since the Gators were looking at their familiar backboards and Coach Lon Kruger, it's got to feel good, your basketball team on an upbeat type situation. Well, it does feel good, Bill. It uh, feels good to come off of a couple of road games where we've won and that's reinforced confidence. It feels especially good to be back home. We're excited about the crowd today, excited about the atmosphere, the atmosphere that uh, will exist in the O'Connell Center. Well, you got a basketball team coming in here, Vanderbilt, one of the best teams in the country. Well, without any question, they're playing with as much confidence, even though they lost at Memphis State earlier in the week, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. They've got uh, an air about their basketball team. They're a hard-nosed group, Elder and Anglin uh, from last year, McMahon from last year. Then you had a McCaffrey and Lawson, two kids that play with uh, extremely uh, high degree of confidence. Uh, they're playing awfully well. Coach, you've been on the road, and this basketball team is growing up. Uh, what are some of your thoughts as they get ready to play here today? Well, I really think we've uh, reached focused a little bit in the last uh, two or three weeks. We, we forgot a little bit. We got into a little bit of a rut as to what we have to do to be successful uh, as a basketball team. And I think we learned some pretty hard lessons on the road. Uh, it's been a long road trip, but it's been a very beneficial road trip. We're playing now uh, more like we have to play to have a chance to win. Coach, good luck. Thank you. Larry? Okay, thank you very much, Bill Cosson. Let's take a look at the matchup. To point guard Scott Stewart for the Gators, playing very well of late, a senior out of Naples. Laley for Vanderbilt, Billy McCaffrey, the outstanding transfer from Duke, who averaged 11.6 for Duke's 91 national champs. Craig Brown at the two guard for the Gators, shooting very well, hitting the big three pointers, matched up with Vanderbilt's Ronnie McMahon, a sophomore from Athens, Tennessee, freshman All SEC last year. Stacy Poole at the small forward, he's the go to guy for the Gators, up against Vanderbilt's Kevin Anglin last year. Anglin played point, now he's a small forward. At power forward, Marti Kuisma out of Helsinki, Finland, averaging 11 a game. Similar numbers to Bruce Elder, although he's just 6'5 for Vanderbilt. And at center, Andrew DeClerc, the sophomore from Clearwater Countryside against Chris Lawson, the transfer from Bloomington, Indiana. That's the matchup. The Florida Gators and the Vanderbilt Commodores will return to tip it up after this timeout. You're watching the Gators on Sports Channel. Did you know that right now the kitchen design specialists at Sears are offering savings of 10 to 45% on all designer image cabinets? Choose from a wide variety of styles and finishes that fit your lifestyle at a price that fits your needs. Sears makes it easy with convenient financing, professionally insured installers, and at Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Call now for a free in-home presentation and let a Sears design specialist assist you in making your kitchen the showplace in your home. If you want to be an expert on the Gators, you need to be a subscriber to Gatorbait, the sports weekly devoted to Gator coverage. Sports reporters around the state are among the most devoted readers of Gatorbait, and the reasons are simple. Everything they need to know to keep up with the Gators is in Gatorbait, including player features, scouting reports, and exclusive recruiting information. With 32 colorful issues plus the Gatorbait yearbook, you can become an expert too. To order your subscription, call toll-free 1-800-782-3216. That's 1-800-782-3216. Don't wait. Get Gator Bait. Welcome back to the Stephen C. O'Connell Center here at the University of Florida in Gainesville, where the Florida Gators home for the first time for a regular season game since December 8th. It's been a long time since we brought you that Florida-Jacksonville matchup, and today it's the Gators and the Vanderbilt Commodores, and let's take a look at Posse's keys to today's matchup. Well, of course, in a marquee game like Florida-Vanderbilt, there's some very important keys. Points off turnovers is the first. The Vanderbilt gets 20 turnovers a game, and the Gators have got to protect the basketball and not allow Bandy to get those easy points. 
The uh, productivity in the paint is the second important key because uh, Florida's inside game is a very big factor. Andrew DeClerc has been missing in action the last four or five games, and they need him desperately. Marty Kuisman needs to play bigger in the paint. And then the free throw differential. Vanderbilt finds a way to get to the free throw line. They're shooting about 25 a game. The Gators shooting just 16 a game. So that 10 points uh, opportunity at the free throw line could be a big difference in this game. Get those extra chances, and of course, nobody guards you at the free throw line. And Vanderbilt, a very good free throw shooting team, as they hit 73% at the line, so they take advantage of those extra opportunities. The Vanderbilt Commodores, under the direction of head coach Eddie Fogler, the Florida Gators, coached by Lon Kruger. Both of these guys viewed as up and coming young coaches in college basketball, and these two programs as well starting to make some noise. Larry, I'll tell you, it uh, is probably in some ways a South. Eastern Conference uh, format for what the people down on Tobacco Row have seen for many years. Two very fine educational institutions, the University of Florida, Vanderbilt University, both uh, members of the very elite uh, top 100 universities in the country. And uh, on the basketball court, Duke and North Carolina matchup give you a great matchup. And Florida and Vanderbilt has the makings as we go along now here in the Southeastern Conference future of being that kind of a game. Well, they're very excited here at the O'Connell Center in Gainesville about the new clocks and scoreboards but the clock or clock's not working so far uh, as far as the big scoreboard is concerned so on the 45 second clock we have the game clock and temporary 45 second clocks rigged up in each corner for the players to keep an eye on and it may be a little bit difficult for them perhaps we'll see a shot clock violation or two as a result eddie fogler in his fourth year at vanderbilt his seventh overall as a collegiate head basketball coach every year he has been a head coach his team has been in postseason play and for the Florida Gators, Lon Kruger, year three in Gainesville, 37 and 34 here at Florida, 170 wins overall for the Gator head man. We're just about set to jump it up. Lawson for Vandy, DeClerc for Florida, and here we go. Florida controls with Scott Stewart. And immediately, Brown looks inside to Andrew DeClerc and gets it to him, can't find the handle. Gators turn it over. Wow. Vanderbilt man-to-man -man in the first possession. There's Billy McCaffrey running the point. Vandy uses a lot of motion on offense as DeClerc almost came up with a steal. He has quick hands for a big kid, does Andrew DeClerc. This officiating crew in the middle, John Clockerty. Most people will call him the best SEC official, a very good one. Kerry Sitton on your left, and Sean Corbin. Sean told me before the game it's his first game in the O'Connell Center. He's looking forward to today's matchup. Well, he's got a good one. It's a capacity crowd, uh, one of the big crowds here early on in this season. And the fans are out here because they know these are two very capable teams. Vanderbilt, of course, the 18th-ranked team in the country. And he got a second chance for Elder, but he missed it. Still no score in the early going. We played 40 seconds, and DeClerc puts it in the basket. That was a fine feed. That was good timing between DeClerc and Stewart. Andrew getting only seven and a half shot attempts per game over his last six games. You talked about that point in the paint situation, and one reason for it we're seeing right now, Andrew picking up early fouls, and he just picked up one. Well, Andrew has been very aggressive, and uh, he is uh, a guy that uh, does not need to pick up those cheap fouls. Here you see a great pass. Scotty Stewart with a left-handed hook pass. Andrew posted up strong. Lawson tried to gamble, and the clerk made the easy basket. So the first foul on the game goes to Andrew De Clerk, the scoreboard is now working, which is an encouraging sign, and DeClerc grabs a rebound. Good board position by the Gators. Florida tries to set up the offense with DeClerc up high. 2 nothing ball game. We've played a minute 15. There's Stacy Poole working on Anglin. Shoots over him, not there. Knocked out of bounds off Lawson. Gators keep it. Both of these teams like to play man-to-man -man defense. They get down low. They fight you on each possession. They make sure they overplay the first pass. Vanderbilt will play some zone, particularly on out-of-bounds plays, but they like to play man-to-man. -man. Nice dish from Poole to Kuisma, who misses the shot. Kuisma fights for his own rebound, backs it out. Good job by Kuisma to keep the thing alive. Florida needs to be on the offensive boards. Vanderbilt, one of their weaknesses is offensive rebounding. They give up quite a few. Craig Brown. And there's a guy that's red hot. 14 of his last 26 three-pointers, 53%. He nails his first one here this afternoon. And Florida's up a five spot after a couple of minutes. 
crowd really getting into it. Big crowd in the O'Connell Center. We'll show you. Even as up to the top row, there are a lot of people in the building. The clerk with another rebound, and he throws it away. McCaffrey to Lawson, who lays it up. Boy, what quick hands, smooth pass. McCaffrey had hardly touched his hands, almost like the legendary Bill Mazeroski when he played second base for the Pirates trying to run a double play. He really got that pass delivered. I didn't realize McCaffrey could turn the pivot as well as he did. <laughs> well, he's a, he's a fine assist man, and he's running the point guard spot for Coach Fogler. In fact, this Vanderbilt team has four guys that could all play the point guard position, but McCaffrey in making that transfer from Duke to Vanderbilt, one of the keys was that he would have that opportunity to play point guard, and he's doing a heck of a job. Florida with a lot of long passes around the perimeter. Quisma. Over the backboard, Andrew tried to follow it up. Not allowed to do that when the ball kicks over the backboard, and so Vanderbilt gets it back, trailing by three in the early going. Vanderbilt does a lot of screening on offense, watching their offensive continuity. How many screens? Florida's ability to fight over those screens, fight through those screens, is one of the big keys to the way they play this game today. Elder knocked away by Stewart. Stewart and Brown collide. We have a jump ball. Arrow favors the Vanderbilt Commodores. So they will keep it offensive end, and Florida will just change the direction of the arrow. Florida very, very active defensively. You watch how they're fighting over that screen, and Scott Stewart back in there giving good help to Quiesma and two Gator players just working hard. And, and Greg Brown got a pretty good lick that time on the side of the head. Yeah, when two guys knock heads, the guy moving quicker does better, and Craig was standing still when Scott nailed him. McCaffrey off balance. Lawson really cleared out, but couldn't get control of the ball. Boy, talk about using your arms to clear out a path. Chris Lawson did it there. Knocked out of bounds by McMahon. Florida keeps it offensive end. Both teams very quick on the defensive end. Hands very active, slapping up the basketball. And again, a big key are turnovers, as we talked about in this game. The team that can have the fewest turnovers is going to have the better chance of winning this one. Florida's already out rebounding Vandy 7-2. Almost a turnover. Pull to the clerk, or rather Quisma. Brown won't shoot. Three seconds the call on Andrew DeClerc. Well, perhaps one pass too many. Florida did a nice job of moving the basketball, but maybe that one extra pass to Clerk was looking to be a rebounder, and uh, John Clockerty saw him in the lane too many seconds. If John makes a call, chances are I'm going to agree with it. He's an excellent official. Wide open, Elder for three, and we're tied at five. Well, you can't allow Vanderbilt's uh, wing people to have that kind of opportunity to shoot the basketball, and uh, Florida's got to do a better job of defending out on the wings. Vanderbilt and Florida are going to come after each other. It's a physical basketball game. You watch the clerk and Lawson working down inside. Andy doing a good job there of keeping position on the offensive end, but... Uh, Stayed in the paint too long that time when Clockerty picked up the three-second call. The officials disagreed under the basket. Uh, one official wanted to call a foul. The other wanted to call travel. And again, traveling is called before the foul. Last time it hurt the clerk. This time it helped him. Saved him from a foul. It sure did. They ran the pick up high. Got Lawson wide open to pitch the ball over the defense. And he traveled before he shot. 5-5 five, five tie. We've played just over four minutes here in the O'Connell Center. Gators looking for national recognition. A win today would help them get it. Anglin ahead of the field. Brown gets back quickly defensively. Lawson, not even guarded, got it easily. Little jump hook is good. He's got four. Florida's going to have a fight on their hands for 40 minutes. If they're ready for it, it's going to be quite a contest. Vanderbilt has come ready to play. Chris Lawson put a body on Andrew DeClerc and kept pushing and pushing, and next thing you know, Andrew was on the floor. Foul on Lawson, his first. You'll see both teams play a lot of people. Vanderbilt has uh, nine players that are averaging 11 minutes or more, and they'll make a lot of substitutions. Here you'll see the shove from behind by Lawson as he puts the clerk right on the floor. <laughs> Well, that's four fouls in that one sequence. <laughs> Pushed him, shoved him, and then need him twice. Florida scored the first five. Vandy has scored the last seven. Vandy in a 1-3-1 zone. 
Not even a matchup zone. A little bit of a 2-3 look, actually, as they square up now outside. Jermaine Carlton, the junior from Hiawassee Junior College, turns it over. Florida giving the ball back to Vandy. That's the fourth turnover for Florida. Inside in the Vandy lineup, that's Dan Hall, and I know you like that, Junior. Dan Hall last year was the soul of the Vanderbilt team. No one came to work every day harder than what uh, Dan Hall did. A guy that's uh, had some injuries, but he really gives you a hard, consistent effort. There you see the turnovers. Vanderbilt with just one, and Florida cannot afford to play this game in giving Vanderbilt so many easy opportunities by turning the ball over. Inside, Woods got the ball, and Carlton gets the foul over the back, and Vanderbilt's getting the ball inside pretty easily. One thing that the addition of Lawson gives Vanderbilt is more depth inside. So we have a timeout on the floor with 14 minutes, 18 seconds to go in the opening half. Vanderbilt has scored nine consecutive points to take a four-point lead. for Florida basketball as the Gators take on the Shockers of Wichita State. It's all right here on Sports Channel, the home of the Gators. Be sure to check your local listings for Sports Channel and Gator Vision coverage in your area. New York Yankees owner George Steinbrenner, just a couple of months from reinstatement. Big supporter of the Florida Gators and amateur athlete, athletics throughout this country, a member of the USOC Executive Committee. There you see Vandy not shooting the lights out, but Florida really struggling. Well, the Gators have to shoot a uh, better percentage. In fact, when they shoot over 50%, they've won 13 games and lost none uh, going back to last year. So the shooting percentage is a big factor, and it's been uh, something that the team is really concentrating on. Foul under the boards called on Dan Hall as he and Kleesmer were fighting for position. Marti is a big factor in the game because of the uh, situation down in the paint. The Kleesmer and the clerk uh, on the bench right now getting a breather. Marti's got to step up as does Carlton and uh, give him some rebounding power. Vanderbilt staying with the zone. Gators have had trouble with zones a lot of the time this year. Well, they're going to find out uh, right now, Vanderbilt is early, if Florida can shoot the ball from the outside. Uh, Vanderbilt very active in their zone, and Florida doing a nice job of moving the basketball right here. Craig Brown wide open, hits his second three-pointer of the ball game. He's been the most consistent uh, shooting that three-pointer, although Scotty Stewart also has stepped up in the last three games. And uh, that's, a, that's a big key for Florida to open things up to get that outside jumper to go down. Anglin guarded by Jose Grimsley. This is Secker, a freshman guard for Vanderbilt. They'll play a lot of players as the Gators do. We'll see guys in and out all day. Hall, nice pass inside to Elder through traffic. Missed the shot, Grimsley rebound. Grimsley's another player who has really helped Florida here in this uh, winning stretch. All three seniors have done a good job of providing important senior leadership. Stewart in traffic, couldn't get a shot off. Craig Brown drives the baseline. Nice dish to Jermaine Carlton. Boy, that was what you call drive, draw, and dish. And he did a super job. Carlton did a nice job of catching the pass and making sure of the basket. Game of runs, the Gators with the last five have reclaimed the lead. Hall, good move. Carlton fed it back to him, and Dan Hall stayed with it. Give Dan Hall credit. He didn't give up on the play. Worked hard to get it back. And a bump foul called on Bruce Elder as he cut off the baseline on Grimsley. There we saw the Gators. Craig Brown has really come on this year. Well, we mentioned the three seniors, but Craig Brown is a guy that's playing like a senior in a lot of ways because he's a winner, and he's made awfully important plays just like that one there where he drove the baseline and got the pass to his teammate Carlton. Craig in the first five games this season was struggling, shooting only 37%, averaging nine a game. In his last five, 13 points a game, shooting almost 50%, and he has six already in this one. 
Florida trails by a point. Jason Anderson into the Gator lineup along with Dan Cross in the return of Andrew DeClerc. They join Poole and Grimsley. There's Cross, a sophomore guard. Gators having trouble penetrating the zone there. Nice dish off to Poole. A matchup zone by Vanderbilt. And once uh, Florida penetrated the zone, Poole was open, got the easy pass, and dunked it. Billy McCaffrey back in the game for Vanderbilt. Passes up the three, moves inside, short on the two-pointer. And Jason Anderson, the freshman with the rebound. Cross takes it all the way, gets into trouble, gets the ball knocked away from him. Stacy Poole ends up with it for the baseline jumper that won't fall. Brian Milburn rebounded. Vanderbilt takes it the other way, down by a point. Just look at the screening, though. Screen, screen, screen. Florida's fighting over screens the entire time in that motion offense. Vanderbilt does an excellent job of being patient and running their offense and getting some good screens to rub off on. DeClerc knocked it out of bounds. Good job that time, overplay out on the wing. Andrew DeClerc can defend out there on the wing, 6'9", but he's got good range, good foot movement, and got out there and deflected the pass. One of the things, though, that has gotten Andrew in trouble has been trying to make the steal and the blocked shot, and he kind of backed away a little bit, I think, from some of those important intangibles, and now he's come back out here tonight, and he's playing a little bit more aggressively in those areas. Crashing in, DeClerc thought he'd draw a charge, no call. Florida looks to run. Dan Cross lost the handle in transition. Stacy Poole hits that one. Stacy struggling a little bit with his shot. Now has four points, two out of five. Well, he hasn't given up, though, Larry. He's still very alert as he made that shot. He was very confident in getting it back up there. DeClerc rebounds on the missed follow by McMahon. Just one shot for Vanderbilt. Florida grabbed it away. Grimsley drove right by his man, but had nowhere to go. Important thing is to keep the ball moving, make the defense work. That was a super pass. Great job by Jason Anderson. Defense relaxed, and they got it quickly to the court. Ronnie McMahon, three-pointer not there. Anderson with another rebound. Jason Anderson had a couple nice plays. The clerk again slams it home, and the crowd comes to its feet. Florida has just beaten Vanderbilt down the court the last three possessions and has him very flat-footed. Those are very, very strong plays by the Gators. Eight in a row, 13-2 to two run for the Gators. Elder drives. He's fouled by Grimsley. Before the shot, it will not be a shooting foul. Jose Grimsley will pick up the foul, but this is a... A noise we haven't heard this year in the O'Connell Center. This crowd is pumped. Just a great look by Jason Anderson. The Vanderbilt in his zone. Lawson was just flat-footed. Super pass for the dunk. Timeout on the floor here at the O'Connell Center in Gainesville. 9.28 to go. Opening half. The Florida Gators lead Vanderbilt by seven. brand all natural chicken no hormones no preservatives so stop doing that funky chicken baby and do what comes naturally you know florida gives us a great climate for growing yep We've got a very fertile climate for banking, too. Oh, yeah, there's lots of banks that have come here. Yeah. But you take a look at First Union. Now, there's a bank that's growing. But they're growing smart. And they're working with it for the long term. Yeah, right. And there's lots of people here that live here and work here, but they weren't born here. I like it. We can get the good ones to stay. The good ones. Well, the 
Florida Gator basketball team with an eight-point run has taken a seven-point lead on Vanderbilt as we're just past the midway point of the opening half here in Gainesville. It's back. Thoroughbred racing action from Gulfstream Park returns to Sports Channel beginning January 12th at 6.30. Be sure to join Gary Seibel for a daily recap of each and every race. Thoroughbred action from Gulfstream Park back and exclusively on Sports Channel. Be sure to check your local listings for times in your area. Kevin Kruger's got to be happy with Dad's team so far. Florida up on Vanderbilt by seven with the biggest crowd in the O-Dome all year long. And they have gotten hot. Remember, they were two for eight. They've made six of their last seven, have the Gators. Vanderbilt really working now to isolate and try to play some one-on-one -on -one basketball. Stacy Poole got a reach-in foul as Craig Brown played good defense on McMahon. Fouls have not been a big part of this game in the early going. In fact, nobody has been to the line. Well, of course, that's a key as we looked at the game, uh, how many fouls were going to be called last year when Florida beat Vanderbilt here in the O'Connell Center. Uh, both teams shot about 20 fouls. Uh, in the game that Florida lost, Vanderbilt shot 41. The Gators shot just 20. So Vanderbilt has a tendency to draw fouls and get to the free throw line, but if the officials let the teams play, that again could be a big key in Florida's favor. Hey, another big key is the play of Andrew DeClerc here in the first half of this game. Stacy Poole forced that one, went for his own rebound. That's not a force. Oh, that's what we're looking for, and that's what the Gator basketball team has seen in the last three ball games. Stacy just didn't give up. He went right after it, made a great play. Open baseline jumper rattles in for Bruce Elder. He has five, and Vanderbilt quiets the crowd a little here in the Odo. Grimsley to DeClerc. Andrew got knocked down on the play, was trying to be a receiver in the paint. Hall knocked him right on the floor, no whistle. Grimsley drives right by Elder, lays it in, and he's fouled. Well, when Jose Grimsley has a chance to have that first step, no one is quicker off the dribble, and he had an open path to the lane. He made that diagonal cut, great little move, as he sprints by and lays it in, and he's just too quick for Bruce Elder. So Eddie Fogler's Commodore's trailing Lon Kruger's Gators as Jose Grimsley goes to the line to try to finish the three-point play, and if he can make it, Florida's lead will be 10. That's Brian Thompson with the orange jersey on, talking with Coach Kruger. Lon Kruger always teaching Larry uh, every phase of the game, every second of the game. He's encouraging his players. He's pointing out little things, making them better, making them a better team. And I think this has been one of the big factors also. Lon didn't have uh, the time with this ball club in the preseason. They had that late uh, starting practice schedule, and it's taken a while for this team to, to understand the offense and understand what's Co what Coach Kruger expects. England missed. Andrew DeClerc just outfought Elder and Hall for that rebound. Well, he's having a heck of a first half, Larry. He's working on both ends, and that's a big key how he plays in the paint. Stacy Poole doesn't get the dunk, doesn't get a foul. He looked at the officials, but good defense by Vandy. And McCaffrey on the fly hits the easy jumper. Look how smooth McCaffrey is in the transition. DeClerc was out there to stop the play, but Billy pulled up. Nice soft jumper and, and delivered. He's a winner, Larry. He's a guy that you got to watch for 40 minutes because he never quits either. Vanderbilt now playing some man-to-man. -man. Stewart alone on the baseline. Three-pointer almost cleared the basket. And DeClerc, thanks to Stacy Poole, keeping it alive. Well, Elder down on the floor, and Coach Fogler wondering where the foul was because Stacy over the back was able to keep the ball alive, but they're letting that go on both ends. That's been very consistent in this first half, so there's no gripe there. Inside seven minutes to go in the half, Florida by nine. Dan Hall, 6'8 junior, <laughs> out there running the point there for a moment. England has it knocked away by Poole, rebounded by DeClerc. Craig Brown passes up the shot, goes right by Elder and lays it in. Wow, I'll tell you again, a great job in the transition. Florida really alertly getting the ball down the floor and quickly putting pressure on the defense. Gator lead is 11. McMahon doesn't take the three. We got a little bump called on Grimsley. 
Well, that's the kind of call that you wonder about sometimes because, of course, it's right out there in the open where everyone can see it. But both teams very physical. Fighting over screens has been a big key here in the first half. Florida has not been intimidated by that Vanderbilt uh, screening and the uh, physical play on the offensive end. Marty Kuisma returns for Florida, along with Jermaine Carlton, Craig Brown, Scott Stewart, and Brian Thompson. The Florida lineup right now. Gators by 11. They are hammering Vanderbilt on the boards. We've got a foul. We'll see if they're going to give him the shot and the foul. Yes. That's the angriest I've ever seen Lon Kruger on the bench. Well, he's got a big gripe, too, Larry. That's an important... Uh, right that he has because the foul obviously occurred far before the shot ever took place. Brian Thompson was trying to fight through the screen. Watch how Brian Thompson knocks the guy down. He's on the ground. Now here's the shot going up from out of three-point distance and uh, obvious to everyone that uh, there was no way that that should have been a, a made basket. Anglin gets the... Apparently it's Anglin with the three-pointer. We'll have to check that. I thought it was Elder. Elder. There's Anglin. I knew he was going to hit one. There's a two-pointer for Kevin Anglin. So that's a five-point play for Vanderbilt. They knock off five of Florida's 11-point lead. That was about almost two or three seconds difference between the foul and the shot. No question. Of course, Brian Thompson, the coach, was over there talking to him probably about how he should fight through screens, and he fought on that screen and knocked the guy down. What a nice move by Carlton. Little one-on-one -on -one down there in the paint again. Florida's post play has been very, very good here in the first half. Gator lead is eight. Lob pass knocked away, recovered by Elder. McCaffrey for three. Nails it. Bill McCaffrey for He's the leading field goal percentage, three-point percentage shooter in the conference coming into this game, and he showed you why. Good job defensively. Vanderbilt down in a good defensive stance. All five players alert, ready to play. Florida's got to work hard to run the offense against a team that's coming at you defensively that quickly. Thompson fakes the pass, misses the shot, but he's fouled. I believe the foul will be on big Chris Woods. Good basketball play, though, that time by Thompson as he got the ball inside the defense. Made a nice little fake and got himself open, got inside there. Little head fake, pass fake, and then he goes up and just misses the shot. Had good rotation on it, wouldn't roll in for him. Foul is on Anglin, not Woods. You also saw Quizma down in there in good board position. Florida's people that uh, are away from the shot are reacting quickly to the offensive boards, and that's been something that Florida's been doing better and better as the season's gone along. Uh, really reacting, uh, not taking it for granted, and trying to go back in there and get that offensive rebound. Both free throws good for Brian Thompson, who's now four for four on the season. And we have a timeout at the O'Connell Center in Gainesville. The Florida Gators and Vanderbilt Commodores in an SEC matchup, and it's the Gators by seven. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting new videotape. This is the professional instructional video that gets results. See how this group of youngsters added an amazing six miles per hour to their arm strength while vastly improving their running speed and defensive skills in just a few weeks of work. Baseball World's revolutionary new video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same defensive drills used by Baseball World's back-to-back 1990-91 AAU National Championship teams. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best offensive drill video ever produced. San Diego Padres Major League Superstar Fred McGriff agrees. I'm so impressed with the instructional videos by Coach Amansky that I've given them my full endorsement. When you watch them, you'll know why. Baseball World's defensive drill video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels and improves coaches' practice organization. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-535-1700. Call now on... Well, the type of game we expected between Florida and Vanderbilt, an intense, fast-paced basketball game with 4.45 to go in the first half. Andrew DeClerc, the sophomore from Clearwater Countryside, 
having a great first half. This is a kid averaging just 5.3 boards in his last six games. He's been struggling. He's had four double-doubles this season, but only one in his last six, and that was against a weak Austin P team. But here, Bill, he might have a double-double by halftime. Well, Larry, with eight first-half rebounds, uh, in the last uh, six games, Andrews only had 10 offensive rebounds. In the first four games of the season, he had 24 offensive rebounds. He is a guy that's got to go to the offensive boards because then you know he's ready to play. And Florida out-rebounding Vanderbilt right now, 18-8, to eight, a big stat. Again, how Florida's playing in the paint, very important. The Gators controlling things there right now. DeClerc has eight rebounds. Nobody else in the game with more than two on either side. Anglin stepped on the sideline as he saved the ball. Good defense by Craig Brown. You know, Vanderbilt uh, is getting a reputation for really trapping the basketball. Very aggressive defensive play. But Florida does not take a back seat to anyone in that regard. Once that ball is picked up, once it's uh, over there on the side, Florida makes it tough. And that time, Vanderbilt turned it over. Brian Thompson on the baseline, looks for it. Carlton, can't get it to Jermaine. Brian again, he's got a good quick first step, pulls up, pops, and it rattles in for him. Well, as we talked about out in Texas, uh, Brian's got a lot of rolls coming his way, and that one certainly came his way. Lawson drove, didn't take it all the way, but Anglin hits the three. Kevin Anglin with five. And the three-pointer will get you back in the game in a hurry. Vanderbilt now down just by six points, and they can shoot that thing from outside. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. In fact, Vanderbilt has hit a three-pointer in every game since the three-point basket came into college ball about 200-some games ago. Only Loyola Marymount can also claim to have hit a three in every game. Craig Brown turns it over. McCaffrey with Kuisma back. That's Elder not there, and Carlton fights for the rebound. Good positioning from Jermaine on Chris Lawson. Florida by six. Stewart drove into trouble, lost the handle. McCaffrey ahead of the field, runs it down. And hits a terrific off-balance shot. I'll tell you what, he had pressure from Brown and pressure from Thompson. And Billy McCaffrey again delivered the basket. Vanderbilt came fighting right back. Vanderbilt was down. Don't ever count him out. And uh, they've been battled back now. It's a four-point game. Those two careless turnovers by the Gators. They have seven. Jermaine Carlton turn around, blocked by Lawson. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Brian Thompson. All of a sudden, a lot, all the little points of the game are starting to go Vanderbilt's way. The momentum is there. They're just fighting and scrapping. McCaffrey out in front. The lead pass, he caught up with it. Retains control. Does not go out of bounds. Brown gets fake. Good pump head fake. Thompson, and the ball's put in the basket off the glass. Billy McCaffrey, very savvy player. McCaffrey leads all scorers with 10 as Jason Anderson and Andrew DeClerc return for Florida, along with Dan Cross, Jose Grimsley, Stacy Poole, the Florida lineup. McCaffrey, Anglin, Lawson, Hall. Well, Vander yes. Vanderbilt's having a lot more success at getting into their offense in the last three or four minutes. Again, Florida makes the substitution, puts Dan Cross on Secker, but Secker got the offense running and moving and the pick and the screen, and the basket is in. Florida's lead is down to one. They led by as many as 11. Dan Cross passes up the open shot. Grimsley looks at pool baseline, doesn't give it to Stacy. Little jump step, passed it off in midair. Stacy knifes through. Actually a 2-1-2 zone look, 2-3 zone look that time. Florida a little bit confused. Stacy had the easy jumper, put it on the floor, and was fortunate to make the basket. Blocking foul called on Andrew DeClerc, his second. We'll be back to the O'Connell Center after this timeout. You're watching the Gators on Sports Channel. The human brain. You know, McCaffrey had made 39 straight free throws, Larry, before he missed one against Memphis State Wednesday night. And uh, he's a great, great shooter. He's a guy that uh, really comes to play every day with that uh, confidence that he can make the jumper, that he can go to the line. He's a lot like Scott Stewart. He has great confidence in his free throw shooting. And as a point guard, there isn't anyone any better right now in the country. 
McCaffrey's second one is good. He has 15 first half points and Vanderbilt is back within one. Dimitri Hill into the lineup for the Gators. The freshman from St. Pete, Dixie Hollins. The clerk sits down. Lon Kruger does not want Andrew getting his third foul here in the first half. Anderson passed up the three, tried to sneak it into Poole, and it was taken away by Chris Woods of Vandy. Grimsley on Anglin. Kind of think Grimsley might ought to get on McCaffrey the way he's playing. McCaffrey drives on Anderson. There you see the veteran against the rookie. Loose ball on the floor, swatted around. Vandy gets it back as Secker. Great effort by Kevin Anglin. They never give up either, diving on the floor for the ball. Both teams very aggressive, hustling. Vanderbilt came away with it. Good second effort. Secker drives on cross, pulls up for the lefty jumper, not there. Poole gives up the rebound to Woods, who puts it back in and gives Vandy the lead. Florida had position, but Vanderbilt out fought him. Woods give him credit. Super job on the offensive board. Grimsley wide open. Vandy will let Jose shoot. He misses. Rebounded by Jason Anderson. Puts it in, and he's fouled. Well, that young man just stayed with it. Uh, Grimsley shot out of one side, and Anderson had good position on the other side of the basket where it's going to come down. Here's Jason right there waiting for it. Fortunate, kind of a garbage basket, but he stayed with it and made sure of it, and he'll have a three-point opportunity. Foul on Frank Secker of Vanderbilt. Jason Anderson, you can see him starting to catch on to what's going on in Division I basketball. You know, honestly, all the freshmen, Larry, I think uh, from game to game, you can see the improvement they're making, and you can see it on the practice court also. These young people uh, making a big step coming from high school to the college level, and they've got a lot of potential, and uh, they're, not, uh, they're not hurting the Gators when they're playing those minutes. They're out there doing a good job. There is a difference of about two between the shot clock and the game clock. Vanderbilt will have to shoot with between, well, as quickly as it goes, between 1.8 and 2.4 seconds to go. Anglin guarded by Anderson. Jason, very quick, good defender. Long 15 arm. on the shot clock. You see the game clock in the bottom right-hand corner. Grimsley on Elder. Four on the count, and Jose backed off. There's an eyelash from a five call. Anglin wide open, three, won't go. Rebound knocked out of bounds in Florida with 1.1 seconds left. We'll have a chance for a quick pass and shot. Well, just like last year when the halftime score was 25-24, a lot better first half, though, this year. Pool, that'll count. No. Stacy hasn't hit a three-pointer in his career. He got a chance. It was right on target, but just a little bit short for the senior. And they head to the locker room. Florida and Vanderbilt locked up in a one-point game. Gators leading 36-35. to We'll be back with our halftime after this timeout. You're watching Florida Gator basketball on Sports Channel. Sports fans, now you can hear both sides of the story. Fancy you play a game and stop crying, you big baby. Knock it off! Knock it off! Oh, play ball, okay. And get an inside look at two of your favorite sports in these fascinating new videos, The Secret NBA and The Hidden NFL 2. Both videos are free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. The best way to get inside the action for over 20 million readers every week. Your two free videos will take you into two different worlds. Kareem is playing number eight. Now, what the do you want? He's a wide receiver. He went out here and tackled it right in front of you. Each with their own story to tell. Tommy, I will listen to Pat. Your bad call is wrong. Trump, that bad call. And neither can keep a secret. Well, tell him to shut up. Shut up, man. Shut up. So call his toll free number now to hear what everyone has to say. You pay a lot of money for that hair weave? Hey, get out of here. You'll know what it feels like to be in the heat of the battle. You just killed the quarterback. Oh. Run, 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 run. Walk, walk. He can't do that. Oh. You'll be involved in the strategy. Milk it, milk it, milk it. Make it tough. No easy field goals. Do it, do it, do it. And you'll join the celebration. Ah. Ah. Call now.
so you won't miss out on all the fun of the secret NBA and the hidden NFL, too. Both free from Sports Illustrated. Get your two free videos and 54 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the swimsuit issue, for only $1.39 an issue. Save over 52% off the cover price. Follow all your favorites in Sports Illustrated. Call now to subscribe or renew and receive your free videos. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Get your two free videos and enjoy all the action and excitement of sports every week. In Sports Illustrated. Call now. Well, an exciting first half of basketball here in the O'Connell Center with the Florida Gators and Vanderbilt Commodores. We're here at the half with the Gators on top by a score of 36 to 35. The start of a new year, new things here at the University of Florida. And joining us now at halftime, the new gymnastics coach, Judy Markell Avner, and taking over for Ernestine Weaver, who left Florida to join her husband, Jim, as the athletic director at UNLV. And Judy, first of all, taking over for someone who's really a legend in gymnastics coaching. That must be a bit of a big chore. Yeah, it is. And Ernestine did a great job here at Florida. Basically started the program, you know, and um, the program's come along so far from the beginning stages. I mean, you know, great crowd support. Uh, she's recruited a lot of very talented athletes, and she has a tradition that was very strongly established, and, um, you know, I'm proud to be a part of it now. Well, you had quite a tradition yourself at Penn State where you were the coach, and, and the Nittany Lions were always in the NCAAs, as Florida well, always <laughs> is. So let's talk about the, the move now, and you're inheriting a very talented Florida team. Tell us about the uh, gymnasts this year. Well, I have quite a few standouts. Um, we have a few real good gymnasts left from last year. Lynette Whitmire, who's a senior, uh, Lisa Panzeroni, who's a junior, Nicole Stocker, a junior, and then Colleen Johnson, who was injured all of last season, or most of last season, um, who's a sophomore, and, and they're back, and, and they're in good shape, and they're ready to go. Plus, I have a really strong freshman class this season. Um, Kristen Guys and Amy Myerson and Wendy Howell have come in, and they're very enthusiastic really want to make their mark, and I think they're going to help our program, even though they're real young. You talked about the crowd support here at the O'Connell yeah. Center, and mm -hmm. I know that's a, an exciting thing to come into, sure. knowing that four to 6,000 will be here every time. Yeah, you know, uh, I competed here. Well, not myself. I coached teams competing here. Um, probably about six or seven times I've been in the O-Dome, and, uh, you know, my feeling was, gee, what a great place to compete, especially if you're a Gator. And uh, when I got the opportunity to come down here, I couldn't wait to, to be a Gator and to have all these fans on my side instead of against me, so I'm real excited about that part of it. A lot of people in Gainesville are excited that you're here uh, taking over Florida Gymnastics. Thanks for joining us. We enjoyed having you here. You're welcome. Okay, Judy, <laughs> <Go Gators>. Mar <laughs> Judy Markell Avner, the new gymnastics coach here at the University of Florida, and you'll be able to watch Florida Gymnastics here on Sports Channel throughout the spring. We're at halftime of Gator basketball. Florida up by a point on Vanderbilt. We'll return to the O-Dome, but first, this time out on Sports Channel. In the world of sports, I've been to just about every big game, and now you can too. Introducing the ultimate sports club. The only club to package travel, accommodation, and great seats to every major sporting event in North America. Now you can really be there. Any regular game, any championship, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, you name it. We're your ticket to any sport. Join the club and get your own club card and membership kit. Seating plans to stadiums and a calendar of sports special events, plus an exclusive club voucher good for three nights accommodations in Las Vegas. Just $24.95 a year. And if you join now, you'll get a second year free. So become a member now. To join, call 1-800-255-6600. That's 1-800-255-6600. Or send $24.95 plus $3.95 shipping to Ultimate Sports Club. Box 2050B, Elgin, Illinois, 60121. have a great beef dinner in no time at all. Well, almost no time at all. Beef, it's what's for dinner. If you want to be an expert on the Gators, you need to be a subscriber to Gator Bait, the sports weekly devoted to Gator coverage. Sports reporters around the state are among the most devoted readers of Gator Bait, and the reasons are simple. 
Everything they need to know to keep up with the Gators is in Gator Bay, including player features, scouting reports, and exclusive recruiting information. With 32 colorful issues plus the Gator Bay yearbook, you can become an expert too. To order your subscription, call toll-free 1-800-782-3216. That's 1-800-782-3216. Don't wait. Get Gator Bay. Well, Florida and Vanderbilt, we talked at the top of the telecast about a budding rivalry in the SEC, and I think we are coming to full bloom here in the O'Connell Center today. Welcome back. The Gators with a one-point lead over Vandy. A very good first half of basketball, Bill. Well, Larry, the last 22 times these teams have played, the average margin of score has been eight points. In fact, 13 of those 22 games have been decided by five points, so it's not surprising to see a one-point game here at the half. Both teams are very determined. They play hard, and they get it done on the defensive end and we saw that here in the first half. Both teams really played to, to their potential. One of Casa's keys at the top of the broadcast was points in the paint, and the Gators did a great job in the first half getting the ball inside. You really like the job of Andrew DeClerc, how alert he was in the first half. That uh, is also a nice feed, but there's good timing between the guy making the pass and the guy receiving it, Andrew DeClerc. Here you'll see a good job by Cross putting the ball on the floor, getting inside the defense, and then dishing it to Stacy Poole for the slammer. On the Vanderbilt and side. And Vanderbilt really can shoot the basketball, Larry. That three-point shot is such a big key for them. It's a weapon that they used very well in the first half. They made five of nine three-pointers. The ball was pitched ahead in this situation, though, to Billy McCaffrey, who got behind the defense and then really had the poise to make the basket. And Kevin Anglin, a guy from the perimeter that you, you just can't let up on any of the Vanderbilt shooters. Everyone on the team can hit a three. Well, of course, Anglin and Elder are both senior statesmen who have come every night to shoot that long-range jumper. But watch McCaffrey here, the transfer from Duke, as he nails the three. Well, let's give Anglin an assist on that play. McCaffrey with 15 first-half points. Well, check out the scoring leaders and first-half stats after this time out on Sports Channel. This is the greatest practice device I've seen in 30 years of teaching golf. That's right. Keep the rod between your arms throughout the entire swing, and you'll develop a better swing and lower scores. The classic swing rod, along with our step-by-step -step instructional video, will show and tell you the proper grip, takeaway, backswing, impact position, follow-through, and finish. The classic swing rod fits on any golf club, right or left-handed, and makes a great gift for all skill levels, including the beginner. The classic swing rod is used in over a hundred of the most prominent golf schools and will improve your full swing as well as your chipping and putting. Order the best practice tool in golf with a chip deck video lesson and make your golf game what it should be. Order now, 800-460-CHIP, only $39.95. Call 800-460-CHIP. Say, that's a great looking camera you have. Where'd you get it? No, don't tell me, one of those specialty camera shops. Wait, I'll bet it's a big-name department store. I'll bet it sets you back a bundle. Actually, no. Introducing the Nippon 35mm focus-free camera. The hot shoe is synchronized for electronic flash, a 50mm lens, and a tripod mount. It also comes with a convenient neck strap, a deluxe leatherette carrying case, a professional 50mm sunshade, and a two-year unlimited warranty. With all these features, you'd think this camera would cost over $100. Well, think again. Call right now, and the first 10,000 customers who order the Nippon camera will also get 100 rolls of free Kodak film with purchase processing. The simple, lightweight, and affordable Nippon 35mm camera and 100 rolls of free Kodak film with purchase processing. This no-fuss camera can be yours for only $19.95. Say, where can I get one? Just pick up the phone and call. Well, 
the Gator Band performing here in the O'Connell Center. Florida last Saturday on the road won a game against Florida State, a nationally ranked team. Today, Bill, Florida trying to get some more national respect, maybe even a ranking against 18th ranked Vanderbilt here at halftime. Well, of course, Larry, this Southeastern Conference is a great league, and it's getting better and better each year. There's a tremendous amount of parity. Vanderbilt now ranked 18th in the conference. The Florida Gators know that this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to take another step, another plateau perhaps in Florida basketball, and this game is a very, very big game, and I know the Florida basketball team came into this game ready to play. Let's take a look at the first half statistics to get an idea how we got to this point in a one-point game. Florida shooting it well and rebounding it well, but those turnovers. Well, the turnovers were are the big key. In fact, uh, if you look at another stat, six steals on the part of Vanderbilt in the first half, none for the Gators. Vanderbilt's been able to convert points off turnovers. The Gators haven't, but Florida has shot the ball well, and that's what's kept them in the game, 55% to 41%. Three-point shooting, again, a big key for Vanderbilt. Those three extra three-pointers, that's a big number. Florida rebounding, doing a good job controlling the offensive backboard. Individually here in the first half, Andrew DeClerc, Stacy Poole, Craig Brown, but look at the numbers for Billy McCaffrey. Florida's been spreading the scoring around all season long, but uh, Billy McCaffrey's been leading the Commodores, so that pretty much is how both teams have played. One thing that's absent, though, from the statistics at the first half, Ronnie McMahon doesn't have a point for Vanderbilt and has played poorly in the first half, and Marty Kuzma for the Gators hasn't scored. So those two players have been absent in the first half, and we'll see if their presence is felt here in the second half. On the boards, the Gators led by Andrew DeClerc, and how about Jason Anderson, a lift off the bench? Jason is again playing better all the time, but he's a very athletic young man, and he got some very important possessions there in the first half. So we're at halftime with the Gators leading the Commodores by a point. We'll return to the O'Connell Center in Gainesville for the second half of the Florida Vanderbilt game, but first this time out on Sports Channel. Sports fans, now you can hear both sides of the story. Why don't you play a game and stop crying, you big baby? Knock it off! Knock it off! Oh, it's my ball, okay. And get an inside look at two of your favorite sports in these fascinating new videos, The Secret NBA and The Hidden NFL 2. Both videos are free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the best way to get inside the action for over 20 million readers every week. Your two free videos will take you into two different worlds. Kareem is playing number eight. Now, what the f do you want? He's a wide receiver. He went out here and tackled it right in front of you. Each with their own story to tell. Tommy, I will listen to Pop. Your bad call is wrong. Trump, that bad call. But neither can keep a secret. Well, tell him to shut up. Shut up, man. Shut up. So call his toll free number now to hear what everyone has to say. You pay a lot of money for that hair weave. Hey, get out of here. You'll know what it feels like to be in the heat of the battle. He just killed the quarterback. Oh. Run, 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 run. Walk, walk. He can't do that. Oh. You'll be involved milk in the strategy. It, milk it, milk it. Make it tough. No easy field goals. Do it, do it, do it. And you'll join the celebration. Ah. Ah. The Call now so you won't miss out on all the fun of the secret NBA and the hidden NFL, too. Both free from Sports Illustrated. Get your two free videos and 54 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the swimsuit issue, for only $1.39 an issue. Save over 52% off the cover price. Follow all your favorites in Sports Illustrated. Call now to subscribe or renew and receive your free videos. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Get your two free videos and enjoy all the action and excitement of sports every week. In Sports Illustrated. Call now. Channel's coverage of Florida Gator basketball is brought to you in part by Mr. Goodwrench, your GM service expert. By the Florida Beef Council. Beef, it's what's for dinner. By the University of Florida Shan Sports Medicine Center. By your Florida Chevrolet and Geo dealers, value leader in its class. By Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue, barbecue at its best. And by Likes Hot Dogs, when it's Likes, it's gone. 
Along with Bill Koss, I'm Larry Vitale. Glad you've joined us here on Sports Channel for Florida and Vanderbilt as we get set to start the second half of this game. The Gators 36, Vandy 35, Coach Lon Kruger. Three games above the 500 mark at the University of Florida, but he's three below 500 in his career coaching against Vandy. Two and five, including a one and three mark here at the University of Florida. He also went one and two at the, with, against the Commodores while he was at Kansas State. As for Eddie Fogler, you know, Eddie Fogler's got a unique situation, Bill, in that he has been, for, as a player, an assistant coach, and a head coach in college basketball, this is his 25th year, his team has never missed postseason play. Well, and they also have never had a losing season. Last year they came pretty close, 15-15, uh, and 15, and got into the NIT tournament, but Eddie Fogler is an outstanding college basketball coach, and again, when you look at Fogler and Kruger on the sidelines, you're looking at two of the premier young coaches in America today, and they're going to have outstanding programs, which again is a very good credit, big credit to Southeastern Conference basketball. Look into the future. These two programs are going to make a lot of noise. Florida starts Grimsley in the second half as Scott Stewart shut out in the first half, hits a three to open the second. Again, that's the big thing that Scott's been doing for Florida. He's been giving him a lift with that outside shot, and he nailed one right there. McMahon too worried about the three-point line, missed an easy shot, and Vandy sets up the offense. Kuisma not starting the second half. Grimsley goes instead to Clerk with the block and his third personal foul. Well, kind of a late whistle out the front. The court thought he had the block over the back. Uh, Florida with some matchup situations here in the second half. They started Grimsley on McCaffrey, giving uh, him a little bit more man-to-man -man pressure. Let's see what happens here. Lawson gets inside. Andrew, he goes up over the back. Whoa, got a little bit maybe of the elbow. Just a slight probably touch on the elbow, but it was a lot more block than it was elbow, I can tell you that. And a very costly foul for DeClerc to have three in the opening minute of the second half. Well, we talk about how important it is for Andrew to have those minutes on the floor. He's the kind of player that if he's out there 30, 35 minutes, you're going to see a lot of productivity. But when he gets in foul trouble, it limits his ability to be as aggressive as he needs to be. Grimsley tried to knife through, knocked out of bounds by McCaffrey and Anglin. A Vanderbilt zoning and uh, Grimsley trying to open things up by penetrating, but the Vanderbilt does a good job of staying at home in that zone and uh, almost got a turnover. Florida leads by two, early going second half. This is almost like the start of a game, the way these teams are kind of feeling each other out, particularly Florida on the offensive end against Vanderbilt. Only five on the shot clock. Grimsley will shoot from the baseline. Air ball. DeClerc puts it back. Andrew knew he had to shoot quickly. Well, Andrew again was in position on the far side of the basket. Grimsley shot all the way over the basket, and uh, DeClerc reacted very well to the shot clock. Andrew rebounded that ball with only two seconds on the shot clock. Great steal by Brown. Two on one with Grimsley. Lob to Jose, who misses. A little bit uh, too fancy that time. Well, Grimsley tried to use his athleticism to be in control with the pass, and he could have probably done a better job of catching it and then making sure of it, but he tried to do it all in one motion and was not successful. You talked earlier about points off turnovers. If there's one weakness in this Florida team, it's the ability to convert two-on-ones and three-on-twos. Well, they've got to do a better job of that, and again, that comes with uh, hard work and uh, more and more practice, but Florida is really much quicker to the basketball here in the second half than they were in the late stages of the first half. Four-point Gator lead. We've played two and a half minutes. Elder in the lane with the jumper. Bruce Elder has seven. You can't allow Elder to have a big second half. McCaffrey had that 15-point first half. Somebody's got to stop him also. They've got three guys out front in Anglin, Elder, and McCaffrey. Andrew DeClerc couldn't convert the great pass from Craig Brown, and Vandy comes back. It was like Craig Brown has missed out on two assists in a row with nice passes. Billy McCaffrey with the first points for him here since intermission. And we're tied at 41 after three minutes of the second half. Well, when you miss those baskets and Vanderbilt converts, that's a total of eight points 
and uh, an eight-point swing, and Vanderbilt now with a tie on the scoreboard. Pool in the lane. Lawson made him adjust the shot, and Stacy missed badly. A little bit of momentum swing. The crowd getting a little bit nervous. You can feel the tension just a little bit as they think perhaps their Gators uh, maybe have gone to sleep slightly, but Vanderbilt just again is taking a pretty good hit here at the start of the second half, and they've bounced right back and knotted this thing up. Don't expect this thing not to go down to the wire. Two teams that are going to play hard for 40 minutes, and we've got a close one on our hands. Anglin drives on pool, pumps, and then shoots off balance. No good. Rebound comes away to Stewart. Good defensive possession for Florida. Got Vanderbilt to take a bad shot. Grimsley looks inside to DeClerc. Lawson put a body on Andrew. Stewart wide open. Can't hit the three. Poole can't control the rebound. Vandy gets it back. Well, Florida just seems to be a half step slow here at the early stages. Poole that time couldn't get a handle on it. The court misses an easy one. The Grimsley misses another easy one. Coach Kruger encouraging his team. And uh, the Gators now go back on the defensive end. There you see the bench scoring. Florida has been winning that battle uh, thanks to a good job by Jason Anderson in the first half. And uh, now Brian Thompson checks in for Stacy Poole. And we see another uh, Boy, everyone's player, sophomore for uh, Vanderbilt. Brian Milburn checks in. Milburn along with Frank Secker, Marty Kuisman in the lineup along with Dan Cross and Brian Thompson. So several changes. Dan Hall also back in. So each team made three substitutions during that exchange. Greg Brown draws the assignment of guarding Billy McCaffrey. And we've got a hold on Brown as he was trying to deny McCaffrey the basketball. Craig picking up his first. Vanderbilt trying to run a little back door. They open things up by bringing uh, Dan Hall up on top to handle the pass and try to get McCaffrey back door. And Brown may have been beaten and held on the play. The clerk almost got the steal. Hall driving through, crashes into Kuzma and a block on Marti. About five seconds after the collision, the whistle finally blows. Marti and Hall were already picking themselves well, back up. Well, watch uh, Hall push off on the way. You don't get to see him push off. But when he came down the lane, his first dribble, he used that uh, arm uh, without the basketball to push off. And no foul was called. And then he went on through to make the play. And they called the blocking foul. And that should not be a shooting, shooting foul. And they're going to give him, apparently, two free throws. That was after the shot is normally an out-of-bounds situation. Here we see a little blood on the knee of Andrew DeClerc. That's an automatic this year that you have to take the player out and uh, do something with the injury and get it patched up, and then he can go back in. Hall misses the first free throw. Second rebound comes out. Brown knocks it away from McMahon, who gets it back anyway. So Vandy offensive rebounding, a missed free throw, has the ball, tie ball game. Good motion, good movement, good passing. Vanderbilt again on the offensive end. Good continuity in their offense. McCaffrey gets past Thompson off the shoulder of McMahon, turns it over. McMahon's just not ready to play in this game. In the first half, he did not uh, help, and here in the second half, uh, McCaffrey makes the quick pass, and uh, McMahon's not ready for it. Ronnie McMahon, freshman All-SEC last year, averaging 10 a game, but you're right, Bill, he's just not here today. He's out there playing, facing the basket uh, in that two-guard spot, uh, making an adjustment at that position, perhaps a little bit like uh, Stacy Poole made this year, stepping up front, but that's still no excuse for not handling the pass. Dan Cross with a nice move through the zone defense to put in the basket. Really look for Dan Cross to be a big asset to the Gators as they start to make a run here in the Southeastern Conference because Dan is a good defender. He's a, got nice size out front, gives you a different look, and he can handle the basketball. And that time, he penetrated and made a good play. Bounce pass. McMahon got away from Cross and uh, laid it in. Got beaten that time, though, defensively. And he needs some help. Somebody on the defense has to talk and help out in that situation when things get cleared out. That's not all Dan Cross's fault. Carlton has it knocked away. Brian Thompson saves, shoots the baseline jumper, not there. 
Rebound knocked away from Carlton, comes away to Secker. McMahon collides with Cross, it'll be on Dan. It was a good play by Dan Cross because he stopped the easy basket. He very physical, jumped up there in front and uh, forced the play. So McMahon will be inbounding, not a shooting foul, when we return to the O'Connell Center. 14.07 to go in the game. Florida and Vanderbilt all tied up. Going, going, gone. Going, going, gone. Gone right into our new zip pack that locks in the freshness of Lake's Premium Jumbo Franks. New zip pack, locked in freshness, mouth watering taste. It only tastes like it costs a lot. And that's why when it's Lake's, it's going, going, gone. There have been over 7 million winners. And over $4.5 billion has been paid out in prizes. Who's got the gas? To celebrate five years of fun and games, the Florida Lottery has a new one. Fifth anniversary. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Oh, yeah! You could win up to $5,000 instantly. Where's the winner? I heard a winner. Play fifth anniversary, the new instant game from the winningest lottery in the world. You could win, too. Expert advice and valuable information are at your fingertips every month in the pages of Field and Stream. From which lures work best to late season deer tactics, Field and Stream is the magazine that brings the outdoors home to you. Call now to get 15 action-filled issues of Field and Stream for only $14.95, a savings of over 50%, and this handsome sturdy field bag free. Be a part of the Field and Stream tradition. Call today to enjoy your free field bag and over 50% savings on America's number one outdoor magazine, Field and Stream. Juan Kruger's Florida Gators in a battle with Vandy, tied up with 14.07 to go here in the second half. Well, Larry, we talk about the Kansas connection with both of these coaches, and that man right there, Bob Johnson, uh, is a former head basketball coach at Pittsburgh State in Pittsburgh, Kansas, where Coach Kruger had his first coaching job. He was an assistant under uh, Bob Johnson, Coach Johnson, and Juan attributes a lot of the things that he has to this day to the experience of coaching with uh, Bob Johnson. And, of course, Juan played for Jack Hartman at uh, Kansas State, another outstanding college basketball coach. Anglin crashed to the floor after missing his layup. Vandy wanted the call. Instead, Elder picks up his third foul as he came over the back on the rebound. Let's take a look. Really good job of setting up the backdoor play after the timeout, and then Anglin misses the shot, and uh, Elder commits the personal foul. So Florida will get the basketball back. Uh, Vanderbilt does a great job, as does the Gators, uh, after timeouts of setting up design plays. And, they had uh, Brian Thompson that time on the string. Elder and DeClerc each with three fouls. DeClerc on the bench. Elder still on the floor. 13.45 to go in a tie ball game. Barta's lineup includes Poole, Carlton, Thompson, Greg Brown, and Dan Cross. Stacy, 19 foot or too strong. Rebound fought for Germain. Should get the foul. Let's see. Yep. Jermaine and Brian Thompson made themselves a Brian Milburn sandwich, and Jermaine got the call. Well, you know, Chris Lawson is a good defender, Larry, and that, that particular time, Stacy was up there around the top of the key, and Vanderbilt in his zone. Lawson stepped up there and put pressure on the shot, and Florida was not able to get the ball off the backboard. So the zone is really helping uh, Vanderbilt here in the second half with board position, and they're doing a good job defending uh, on the perimeter with it also. It's about the third time Lawson has forced Stacy Poole to adjust his shot. Marti Kuisma checks back in. Brian Thompson will sit down for a few moments. Pace of this game has slowed a lot here in the second half. Well, both, both teams, uh, a lot at stake here, and they're making sure on each possession, uh, good movement of the basketball. They're trying to get the good shot, and it's, uh, again, a defensive war in many respects. Boy, we're going to have to keep an eye on those fouls we just showed you. Lawson rattles out. Kuisma gets the rebound. Vanderbilt, such a good free throw shooting team, and they're just one foul away from getting up to the one and one. Pool hits, and Elder has four fouls. 
Stacy Poole again has to get in the offensive flow. The Gators are trying to get him there. That time he took it all by himself, one on one, right down on the baseline. Watch Stacy as he puts it on the floor, changes to the left hand. Elder right up in his face. Stacy nails the jumper. Elder says, I didn't touch him. And perhaps he didn't. <laughs> but Stacy will get a three point play. Yeah, I would not accuse him of lying in that situation. <laughs> That was a lot of air between the two of them. And Coach Eddie Fogler not happy about it. And Bruce Elder, who averages 12.4 points, five and a half rebounds to lead Vanderbilt in that category, now has four personal fouls. Stacy has just moved up a notch on the UF scoring list today, passing Tony Miller with that basket. But he misses the free throw. Yeah, we got to give Tony some credit there. He got all his points in three years, and he was a great scorer for the University of Florida back in the 70s. And uh, Stacy's just passed uh, one of Florida's all-time great scorers in Tony Miller. Tony still has the single-game scoring record, I believe, 54 against, what, Chicago, Chicago State? Chicago State. You got it. Yeah, I won a trivia contest. What's the prize? I saw him get every one of them, too. And they were long-range jumpers. If we'd had a three-point circle back when Tony Miller played, he'd have a lot more points on his record. Dan Cross with a terrific coast-to-coast -coast layup gives Florida a four-point lead. And now the crowd is getting back into the game. 11,822, the official attendance today in Gainesville. looking for Lawson who has not been much of a threat offensively. McCaffrey just a handoff to the bullish center. A little jump hook won't go. Quisma knocked it away from Craig Brown and it goes out of bounds off Craig. Boy, you'd like somebody to grab the ball in that situation. Florida had good position on the boards but couldn't get a hold of it. Well, I think Craig was going to get a Let's hold of it. Watch what Dan Cross does now to Anglin as he puts the ball on the floor. And boy, a nice head and shoulder fake. Drives right down, uses the left hand off the glass. That's just some very fine guard play out of Dan Cross. Andrew DeClerc back in the Florida lineup. McMahon back in for Vandy. And Jason Anderson returns for Craig Brown. So the Gator lineup is DeClerc, Quisma, Cross, Anderson, and Poole. McCaffrey, Hall, Milburn back in there. Lawson is out along with McMahon and Secker for Vandy. Florida wanted a little turnover there as uh, Stacy Poole deflected the ball off of Hall's knee and he picked it up and bounced it again. Jason Anderson guarding Billy McCaffrey. That's a big job for the freshman. That's uh, an interesting matchup too because Jason Anderson has long arms and he's very quick. And that's one, you give Billy McCaffrey credit for that call because he stole the call by hitting the ground after the shot because there was no call until Billy McCaffrey went to the ground. Well, that, that's really a good observation. Watch the long arms and the quickness and the athleticism as, he, as Jason Anderson gets up in the air. He was right up there. And then he turned around and looked and McCaffrey's laying on the floor. And there you'll see the fouls called long after the shot took place. And give Vanderbilt credit again. They do that a lot. They're uh, a team that likes to draw that official's call uh, for, the, for the foul, and they do it on the defensive end. When they trap, if uh, the player with the ball tries to break through the trap, you'll see him flop to the floor in a hurry to try to get the foul call. But again, a good job by McCaffrey of getting to the line. McCaffrey misses them both. But he gets the rebound, and the short jumper is good. He ends up with two points anyway. Second time, Florida's given up an offensive board at the free throw line. And they turn it over. McCaffrey with two can tie the game. He gets the layup to fall. Boy, it's been all McCaffrey again when Vanderbilt needed him. He's come back here with some big, big points. Well, Long Kruger's got to be aggravated at those offensive rebounds at the free throw line. You bet. McCaffrey now with 21 points in the game. His average is 19, and the turnover again by Dan Cross set up the easy basket for McCaffrey. Anderson gets it to Stacy Poole, back to Jason. Poole guarded from long range, misses Vandy rebounds. Nobody on the offensive board. The clerk with three personal fouls. A little bit more cautious, not banging in there. Marti Quisma hasn't really been there today. Offensive foul on Milburn. 
Of course, the crowd went silent on the whistle because of uh, the fact that the clerk uh, has those three personal fouls. But Hall, a little too aggressive trying to get position. Gators now need a basket. This Scott is a, Stewart back in for the Gators. Another one of those possessions where you need to start establishing something again. If you want to take control of the game again, you get it done right here. A long time since the Gators have scored. Chris McGarded gets it to Stewart. Back to Marti, looking for his first points. Doesn't get him. Rebound. Anderson knocked it from DeClerc, but Andrew hustled it back. Marti has not been able to get it to go down. Stacy Poole, jumper is good. He just, needed that one. Just a two-pointer, but Stacy again delivers a big basket when Florida needs it. Anderson guarding Billy McCaffrey. Whistle, timeout called by Eddie Fogler and the Vanderbilt Commodores. Nine minutes, 30 seconds to go in the game. Florida and Vandy in a good one. Gators up by a couple. Did you know that right now the kitchen design specialists at Sears are offering savings of 10 to 45% on all designer image cabinets? Choose from a wide variety of styles and finishes that fit your lifestyle at a price that fits your needs. Sears makes it easy with convenient financing, professionally insured installers, and at Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Call now for a free in-home presentation and let a Sears design specialist assist you in making your kitchen the showplace in your home. Okay, Ralph. Smile, Ralph. Why does Eckerd System 2 give you two great sets of prints? So you can share. System 2, two prints, two rolls of film, only at Eckerd. Since Eckerd always accepts their competitors' photo coupons and advertise specials, shouldn't their competitors always have to guarantee quality as good as Eckerd? Well, the Florida Gators with a two-point lead on Vanderbilt. Nine and a half to go in an exciting ball game here at the O'Connell Center in Gainesville. And more exciting basketball is headed your way here on Sports Channel. Miami Heat basketball tomorrow at 10.30. The Heat in L.A. to take on the Lakers. Then it's off to Utah to battle Carl Malone in the Jazz on Tuesday night. And back home on Sunday, January 24th, against the Dallas Mavericks. All right here on Sports Channel. Check your local listings for avail availability in your area. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by the University of Florida solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Along with Bill Koss, I'm Larry Vitell. Billy McCaffrey, the transfer from Duke, he averaged 11.6 for Duke's 1991 national champs. He has 21 today against the Florida Gators. There you see, yep. neither team shooting well since intermission. McCaffrey misses, rebound knocked out of bounds by Lawson. Florida gets it. Bodies flying everywhere. Both teams playing very physical inside, and uh, the Gators get the basketball. McCaffrey has been really keeping Vanderbilt in this game with his great shooting. Brown's jumper rattled out. Stacy Poole with the offensive rebound. Because Vanderbilt averages 51% a game from the field. They're leading the Southeastern Conference. They're shooting just 41% so far at this stage of the game. Poole misses, but he was fouled by Dan Hall, and Stacy will go to the free throw line. That was a little better job now getting Stacy the ball down inside. He's little, probably a little more comfortable down in there, but watch how the pass gets into Stacy, and he makes gets a nice screen from DeClerc as he spins around the screen, uses the screen, and puts it off the glass, won't go for him. The clerk right there, too, on the offensive rebound. If the foul hadn't been called, he was right there to rebound. Poole makes the first one. Stacy one for two on the line today. And he's really improved his free throw shooting this year. He's only missed three so far this season. And he's shooting right up around 88%. Four-point ball game inside, nine minutes to go. Poole now with 14 for the Gators. A game like this, a physical game, starts to have an effect on your stamina. Vanderbilt on the road, playing very hard, doing a super job running their offense. Very disciplined basketball team. They work hard on the defensive end, and they make you work on your defensive end. 
McCaffrey one on one. Gets it to fall, Billy McCaffrey with 23. Another acting job as he rolled and hit the deck, but they didn't make the call. They let, he got the basket though. Again, McCaffrey. We're hearing that name all game long. You almost wonder if you have to box and one a guy like that. Florida really, only Grimsley seems to be able to keep up with them. Can you imagine Bobby Hurley and Billy McCaffrey in your backcourt? Holy mackerel, what a great backcourt. Of course, Duke doesn't need any help. Uh, Vanderbilt needs it uh, probably a lot more than Duke does, but still, those two players were very good. There's a foul. The shot won't count. Anglin crashed into the clerk on the screen. That was almost a rerun of the McCaffrey basket and the foul on the screen against the Gators in the first half. Instead, it'll be an inbound situation for Florida since the ball didn't go. Really strong athletes, strong players. Lawson this time, the clerk trying to make the screen and Lawson fighting over it. Knocks him to the deck. I thought Hall knocked him down. Anglin. Anglin knocked him down, okay. Inside Quisma to Stacy Poole. Gators don't attack. Instead, they work it around. Marti for three. Gets it. First points of the day for the junior from Helsinki. Boy, were they needed to. Marti stepped up there, had a lot of time to look at the basket and made sure of it and got it. Now the crowd picks it up. Seven and a half minutes left. Florida's lead is five. They'll let Lawson shoot that. And he'll make it. They should. <laughs> <laughs> Pool on the baseline is fouled by Anglin. So it's getting a little testy out there with the Vanderbilt players as they're really scrapping. Anglin with a couple of quick ones now has three on the day. Well, the thing that made that possible was the transition. After the made basket, Florida got it inbounds in a hurry and Pool sprinted the other way with it and had the defense flat-footed. Again, you've got to run back defensively when you're playing Florida because they'll get it out of the basket and back down the other way in a hurry. Team fouls have now evened up at six apiece. So it'll be one and one time for everyone. Quisma, very strong. De Clerc rebounded, had it stolen away, got it back from Anglin, and a jump ball is called. Arrow favors Vandy. That was important, though, for Andrew to get in the middle of that fray. He came off the board with it and uh, got it taken away from him, but he got back in there and fought for it and caused the jump ball. And now the shot or the arrow will be back in Florida's favor because of the extra effort of the clerk right there to uh, cause the uh, jump ball situation. Inside seven minutes to go, Florida's lead is three. Inside McCaffrey, give him 25. Well, he beat Craig Brown that time. Again, the back door. Got Craig to turn his back on the basketball and got a nice pass. Scott Stewart over to Stacy Poole. Stacy with a little leaning jumper, not there. Rebound tip. Poole comes away with it. Stacy drives the baseline, stepped on the end line. Gators felt he was pushed, but it's Vanderbilt basketball. Well, Give Stacy credit for getting the offensive rebound. Now let's see if he yeah, got a little push possibly, and certainly his foot was on the line. Turnover for Florida. Another turnover for the Gators now as they uh, pick up their 12th turnover in the game. Vanderbilt with just five turnovers in this game. Even though Vanderbilt's shooting percentage has been down low, the fact that they've been able to maintain possession of the basketball and not turn it over has been a big key for them here as the game's gone along. We're down right now to the six minute mark. And it's a one-point game. Like you said, Bill, there's no way this game won't go down to the wire. And it looks like you're exactly right as Vanderbilt moves it around McMahon. He has all of two points. They keep going to McCaffrey, and Florida can't stop it. Billy McCaffrey with 25 of Vanderbilt's 53. He scored 26 in their loss to Memphis State. I'll tell you one thing, when this game is over, both of these teams are going to know they were in a game. This has been a very physical basketball game, a hard-fought game on the part of both teams. Poole in transition, pulls up, misses the shot. He's fouled by Milburn. 
So Stacy Poole will go back to the free throw line. Stacy's been fortunate to get foul calls on a couple of possessions here where he's kind of made a little bit out of control shooting the basketball. What I liked also on that play, which don't, won't show up, is the clerk really ran to the other end and was there to get the offensive rebound. But Stacy will be at the line shooting a couple. We saw the great game Stacy had in Tallahassee a week ago today when Florida knocked off Florida State. And now Stacy will take a couple at the line where he is three for four today. Or rather two for three. The Cork with another double double, 10 points, 11 rebounds. So he's making his presence felt here this afternoon. Remember, he had eight points and eight rebounds with about five minutes to go in the first half. Foul trouble has plagued him a little bit, cost him uh, some time on the floor. And Poole makes them both. Jose Grimsley returns to the floor for Florida. Poole will get a break. Now, here you'll see another uh, coaching change for the Gators as they bring Grimsley in, put him on McCaffrey, and he did an excellent job against Cassell in the late stages of the Florida State game, which made a difference. And there he gets it to turn it, turn it over. What a job by Jose Grimsley. We call it after the timeout. We talk. comes in, puts the pressure on McCaffrey. He is he such a over. good defensive player. Well, that is. And this is the thing now that Kruger did to Florida State. Cassell was having kind of his way of things. He put Grimsley on Cassell. Now in the last five minutes, he makes a little bit of a change, puts Grimsley on McCaffrey. Quicker look, little different look, and McCaffrey turns it over. Vanderbilt back in that 2-1-2. Florida's just going to play catch for the first 20 or so seconds on the shot clock. Cross, Grimsley, Brown, Kuisma, and DeClerc, and now timeout will be called by Lon Kruger. Four minutes, 55 seconds to go in the game. The Florida Gators at home against Vanderbilt with a three-point lead and the ball when we return. Everyone loves a fireplace. And now you can have a fireplace in your own home, no matter where you live, with no construction costs, no chimneys or venting, no gas lines or installation of any kind. Yes, you can turn a plain wall like this into the coziest spot in your home with the amazing Real Flame Ventless Portable Fireplace. The Real Flame comes complete, sets up in under an hour, then goes in any room, upstairs or down, over carpeting, anywhere, without the mess of firewood, kindling, soot, ashes, or even smoke. So why spend another season without the joy of a Real Flame fireplace in your home? You can get a big color catalog for just $2. Call toll-free 1-800-582-2600. That's 1-800-582-2600 for the whole wonderful story of the amazing Real Flame Fireplace. We are the boys. They play it here at the O'Connell Center just like they do at Florida Field. The Gators leading Vanderbilt 56-53. For highlights on these and other Gator games, be sure to tune in for Florida basketball with Coach Lon Kruger Monday, January 11th at 6 o'clock and Thursday at 6.30. It's Gator Hotline. Your chance to call in and talk live with the Gator head man hosted by Mick Hubert. That's Gator Hotline on Thursday. Florida basketball highlights on Monday right here on Sports Channel, the home of the Gators. You know, Larry, we talked about McCaffrey a little bit and what a great job he's done and he has 25 points uh, shooting the ball so well from the outside but he has a tendency to turn the ball over and he had, he leads the team in turnovers of course the point guard handles the ball a lot tries to make a lot of big plays but that the particular defensive play by Grimsley was an important play at that stage of the game still a lot of time left but uh, McCaffrey did turn the ball over in a crucial situation on that particular possession 19 on the shot clock as the Gators inbound to Dan Cross. Dan gets it to Craig Brown. Baseline jumper, not there. Grimsley rebounds, puts it back, won't fall. Rebound fought for. Who gets the foul? It'll be Hall or McMahon. I believe Ronnie McMahon picks up the foul. It is on him, his first of the ball game. Well, now you're down at a situation where Fogler's not going to be happy with the call. 
because Vanderbilt trying to get the ball off the offensive glass and the Gators banging in there trying to get the offensive rebound. But give Florida credit for going back to the glass and keeping that thing alive. You can see Eddie Fogler's dissatisfaction with the particular call. Frank Brown misses the front end of the one and one as the Gators struggling a little bit at the free throw line in this game. Have missed several opportunities. Three point game still for Vandy. Florida has not been able to extend the lead on their last two possessions. Elder back in with four fouls guarded by Brown. Well now you give Vanderbilt a chance to have a possession and see if they can't get some momentum. McCaffrey hits the jumper. And he hit it over Dan Cross. He used the screen well. Grimsley couldn't get over the screen. And Cross had to make the defensive play, and McCaffrey nailed it. Nice adjustment by Eddie Fogler. Go to a screen to get Mc Grimsley off his man, Billy McCaffrey. That's the biggest challenge that Ford has had this year in fighting over screens because Vanderbilt just does such a great job of running the motion offense and setting good screens, and the players use the screens well. Jose Grimsley drives to the basket. Well, we saw that he was quicker than Elder in the first half, and that time he took Anglin to the basket and beat him for an easy, easy two points. Andrew DeClerc exhorted the crowd as he ran back to play defense for Florida. Vanderbilt looking for McCaffrey again. This is McMahon, and he threw it away off Dan Cross, however. And Vandy keeps it offensive end with 28 on the shot clock. There's Stacy Poole checking back into the Gator lineup. Quismo will sit down. Tough day for Marti. Hasn't really been able to get into the flow offensively at all. And that's coming off a tough day up at Auburn where he struggled and missed all of his field goal attempts, I believe. Elder hits the jumper in the lane. Well, that's a textbook jump shooter right there. When he got inside the defense, he squared up, had that left elbow in a good spot, and the right hand delivering the shot. Good rotation on the ball. He just is a textbook jump shooter. Inside, three minutes to go. Florida's lead is one. Gators very patient with this Vanderbilt zone as they look to get it into either Poole or DeClerc. Or a chance to drive, like Grimsley found last time, and he dragged, dragged his big pivot foot. Well, the freshman Secker made a nice play as he defensively slipped uh, back away from Grimsley offensively, and Grimsley had a second thought on the pass and turned it over. Florida now with 11 turnovers to just six for Vanderbilt. There's a question there. I don't know, somebody just ran by without checking in. Long Kruger seems encouraged. The clock's down to 2.38, so they're gonna say they're gonna hold the clock for three seconds. So there was a clock problem here at the O'Connell Center. Looked for a while like we would be clockless today, but they got them going just to... Boy, they're beautiful new scoreboards too, Larry. That's a real nice addition. And you got a capacity crowd in the O'Connell Center and these beautiful new marquee scoreboards, why? It's a beautiful place to attend a basketball game. And we'll try to give you a chance to take a look at those scoreboards here at the O-Dome down the stretch. 2.30 to go. Florida's lead is just one. Wide open. Secker missed it. Brown, strong rebound. Poole on the fly. Goes right by the defender. Missed the layup. DeClerc fights for the rebound. Jump ball. Florida gets it. Well, again, the second effort of DeClerc. He set it up, though, moments about three minutes ago when he went on the floor and got the uh, held ball situation, and that time he got in there and got a nice rebound. Well, Stacy Poole misses. The court goes to the board, grabs the rebound. Oh, my, he got fouled. He's getting... Look at that arm in there trying to grab it away. Could have been a, a foul on that call. But, tell you, uh, Stacy's got to use the glass on that shot, though. He has to make the basket is what he has to do. Either use the glass or make certain of the basket because he had an easy, uncontested shot as he got past the defense. Fresh 45-second clock for the Gators, who lead by one with 2.15 to go. Stewart, the count is on. Tequismo is back in the lineup. Lob pass to Stacy Poole, who has it down low. Eight-foot jumper there, and he's fouled. England questions the call, but Poole's going to the line. Well, there was no question that Florida was setting up Stacy Poole. 
to play one on one and they got the ball to him nice pass by Scott Stewart Anglin trying to put on the defense goes up over Anglin scores the basket and draws the foul so Stacy with a big play now with 18 points on the game and there's a look at the scoreboard now we get a chance to see the Gators uh, players that are in the game and the number of fouls on each player the number of points in the same way with Vanderbilt the fans can have a much better idea of what's going on in the game with that marquee up there showing them that free throw would have helped Gator lead remains three a three-pointer can tie it with less than two minutes to go McCaffrey guarded by Stacy Poole this time as Grimsley's back in for defense Elder in the lane won't fall rebound fought for Grimsley's got it to Scott Stewart the Gators run it up Poole on the baseline air balls it rebound knocked loose foul on Stacy Poole and that's a shot that should not have been taken well you you called it right Larry uh, uh, the first thing I was going to say was what a good job Grimsley did of wanting the basketball wanting to get the defensive rebound on the other end he went after that thing with a vengeance and got it and then Stacy just hurried the shot so it was you're right and uh, now Florida will pay because Vanderbilt's down here now in a one and one situation and they'll be shooting see Lon Kruger over there with Scott Stewart it all started with Scott attacking the yeah. basket and he was saying hey Scott remember the situation right. but he's so patient when he does that. I'm sure for a player that's got to feel good and you go over there and he's not throwing a chair at you or throwing a jacket at you Lawson one and one bricks it rebounded by Poole that's as badly as you can miss a free throw when you're not doing it on purpose. Well, he's one of the poorest free throw shooters on the team, so if you want someone shooting it right there, it's it's Lawson. Stacy, or rather Scott Stewart, uh, turns the thing over because he went down on his knee with the basketball, and as soon as you go down, it's a travel. He's down. He picks it up. It's a travel. Well, he can stay down. He can stay down. If he'd stayed down and someone had come back to help him, it would have been all right, but once he went down on the deck, he had to stay down. And Vanderbilt calls time, 121 left on the clock. Florida's lead is three, and Vandy can hit the three-pointer. We'll return to the O'Connell Center in Gainesville after this timeout on Sports Channel. Did you know that right now the kitchen design specialists at Sears are offering savings of 10 to 45% on all designer image cabinets? Choose from a wide variety of styles and finishes that fit your lifestyle at a price that fits your needs. Sears makes it easy with convenient financing, professionally insured installers, and at Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Call now for a free in-home presentation and let a Sears design specialist assist you in making your kitchen the showplace in your home. People trust Eckerd Express Print 60 one-hour photo processing with their most precious shots because they recognize the difference trained photo experts make. Which is exactly why space shuttle photographer John Lewis Salisbury trusts Express Print 60 with his precious shots. Eckerd Express Print 60, including two rolls of film for the regular price of one. For pictures too important to wait. In the first half of this game with a minute 21 to go, a real key call that gave Vanderbilt a five-point play could be important here down the stretch. Well, we talked at the time that we've never seen Coach Kruger get more upset at something. There you see the foul by Brian Thompson, and the foul's committed. And then long after the foul, you see the long-range jumper go down, and they counted the basket. And uh, then they got the ball back in play and made another basket. And so that five-point swing, the three-pointer, which was by McCaffrey, and then the two-pointer was a five-point uh, difference right there. Florida with a three-point lead at this point, 121 to go. Vanderbilt will put the ball in play. You see the Gators with 18 points off the bench. Nobody with more than four off the bench. A lot of guys have helped out. Grimsley, Carlton, Thompson, Cross, each with four. Anderson with a couple. And Florida now has Craig Brown on McCaffrey. Just about everybody on the floor has had McCaffrey at one time in this game. Except you and I. Now that would have been a mistake. <laughs> Elder moving in. Knocked away by Craig Brown. Bandy gets back. They do try an alley-oop and lose the possession again. 
Three straight possessions Florida's mishandled, and the lead remains three as they're keeping Vandy within a basket. Well, we were giving a lot of credit to the seniors for making some big plays and some winning plays. Actually, Craig Brown makes a gamble here as he makes the pass, and Stacy tries to make a thunder dunk. And again, you've got to make sure of it, Stacy, and he knows that better than anyone on the floor, Pool anybody now. in the building. Pool now, seven for 21. We've got 40 seconds to go, and a foul on Grimsley. Not a bad foul, because Andy needs three to tie this game, and McCaffrey will have to shoot a one and one. Well, of course, the, if you want someone at the free throw line, you want uh, McCaffrey up there, the best free throw shooter, although he's missed a couple in this game. He's the guy you want there, and now you'll watch uh, Grimsley as he tries to keep McCaffrey from getting the pass and mugs him pretty good, and McCaffrey actually came right over here to where we're trying to broadcast this game, <laughs> and so maybe we would have a chance to defend him at some point in the game, Larry. But he's up there right now shooting free throws, and Vanderbilt with 40 seconds left on the clock has a chance to cut this thing to two. Vandy's had a couple of offensive rebounds at the line here in the second half. McCaffrey makes the first one. He has 28. Well, it's a two-point game with this free throw. It can cut it to one. Florida will not have to shoot, but you know Vanderbilt will be aggressive defensively. And Florida will get two shots when they go to the line. Vandy has nine fouls here in the second half. McCaffrey makes them both. Nothing but net. Now Vanderbilt puts on full court pressure. Gators break the pressure easily as the clerk makes the catch and throws it away. Again, trying to attack the basket. And Vanderbilt down one with 30 seconds to go. And they call timeout with 27 ticks on the clock. <laughs> so the Florida Gators with a pair of turnovers, a pair of missed shots here in the closing seconds of this game. Well, you see the camera on Andrew DeClerc as he sits down. He's the guy that made the pass, and you wonder what he's thinking about, but it's a split-second play, and he is thinking somebody with a white jersey is wide open. Instead, it's a gold jersey right under the basket, and he threw it into Vanderbilt's hands. Florida just has not handled this uh, last uh, couple of minutes very well. Here you see the clerk. First of all, it was a bad pass. Why are you throwing the ball down in the corner as uh, Andrew had to go way out wide to field the pass and made a, did a good job actually of catching the pass and not going out of bounds. But then instead of uh, getting under control and making sure of the next pass, he fired it underneath and turned it over. Just a mental error. There you see Florida has had close games this season go the other way. Their three losses by a total of 12 points this year. That includes a five-point loss to Temple, a three-point loss to Texas A&M, and a four-point loss to Purdue. But the Gators have also won close games by two over South Florida, one over NC Charlotte, by three over Florida State and Auburn their last two times out. So this team has gone down the stretch before, and they've handled it with mixed success. But uh, today they've really been over aggressive I think on the offensive end trying to score instead of taking care of the ball. Well both teams have been in close games this year. Vanderbilt won a game over Oregon 83-81. They beat Louisville 90-88. They were in a close game with SMU and uh, of course, this game uh, right down to the wire, uh, Vanderbilt uh, getting uh, the benefit of a couple big uh, mistakes on the Florida Gators' part. Mental, mental mistakes here in the last few minutes, but the Gators have been in this situation a lot of times this year already, and they're a mentally tough team, so we'll see how they handle this last 27 seconds. Florida with Cross on the floor, along with Poole, DeClerc, Grimsley, and Brown. Lawson... England Secker, the freshman guard, is in there. Well, they put him at the point in McCaffrey off, up on the wing. So now you've got uh, both uh, Elder and uh, McCaffrey playing out on the wings. And Secker was playing uh, the point guard spot. Any one of these three guys can run the point. A blocking foul on Poole with 4.7 to go. Way outside, three-point range. Vanderbilt had not been able to get into the offense, and Florida commits a foul. Well, we, talk, we talked about how Vanderbilt does a great job of drawing the uh, foul, and right there, Elder shows you. As Stacy Poole tried to get the charge, Elder did a nice job of handling the uh, basketball and drawing the foul, and so that's a very, very big call right there. And again, Stacy Poole picked up the foul, and... Uh, Vanderbilt will be at the line with a chance to tie the game or perhaps take the lead. 4.7 ticks left on the clock. 
If Vanderbilt makes them both, the Gators will still have two timeouts remaining. And 4.7 seconds is a long time, and if you don't believe that, ask the Kentucky Wildcats about Duke and the shot that Christian Leitner made last year in the regional final when they had much less time available. Well, Bruce Elder is a, a very savvy and a very heady basketball player. He's a senior. He's a 78% free throw shooter. This year, he's a 73% field, uh, free throw shooter in his career. Coach Kruger over there on the sidelines now. Let's see if we can hear what he's saying. So it'll all come down to Bruce Elder, the academic All-American from Marietta, Georgia, who has really struggled in this game because of foul difficulties, has scored nine points, but has not been to the line. He's made four field goals, one of them a three-pointer. He will have two shots. And there he is, Bruce Elder. It's been the Billy McCaffrey show, but McCaffrey can just stand and watch as Elder goes to the line. Well, you might say he shouldn't even be up there because he's already earned his college degree. He's actually working on a master's degree, which he's going to complete in the spring. But Bruce Elder is a guy that can shoot the ball. They signal a one and one. I thought Florida had 10 fouls. I guess it was the ninth. He rattles it in, and this game is tied. Got a lot of iron, but he got it to go down, and now he's going to be a little more confident about the second one, and the Gators are going to call a timeout. Which is reminiscent of Scott Stewart at Auburn Wednesday night. His first one went around and around before it finally went in. The second one was perfect. Hey, listen, we've got a ball game, don't we? It's been this way the entire game from start to finish. Both teams have uh, fought each other hard, and it's been uh, up and down, up and down and right now it's all tied up with uh, just under five seconds to play. So what more can you ask as a fan except that at home you'd like uh, to make sure you come away with a win. So the Gators have got themselves in a position here with a couple of uh, turnovers in the last uh, minute of the basketball game and a very heads-up play by Bruce Elder to draw the foul and to be at the foul line in this position to win a game for Vanderbilt on the road. 60 of time left. 60 60 is our score. It was 36 35 at the half. Florida had an 11 point lead early on at 26 uh, to 15. Florida up by 11. Vanderbilt has never really had any kind of big lead in this contest. But if they can make this free throw, they will have a very important lead with 4.7 ticks on the clock. Let's go ahead and look ahead to that 4.7. What do you do in that? That's some time to do something, but what can the Gators do in that time? Well, one thing, uh, Florida still will have a timeout left uh, once uh, the ball goes through the basket, and they could get the ball to half court and then call timeout, in which case they would be able to put the ball in play in the front court and uh, try to get a little bit uh, better shot opportunity uh, probably with the clock down inside, somewhere inside uh, three or four seconds. But uh, right now, the key is will Elder make this shot? And if Elder misses the shot, will Florida then uh, get the ball to half court and call a timeout, or will they try to make the basket uh, without the time running off? Elder makes the shot. Let's yeah. watch 4.7 ticks on the clock. Stewart quickly offensive end gets it to Stacy Poole. Jumper will count. Yes! Yes! Stacy Poole drills it and the Gators win. Well, Larry, if you had to have the storybook finish. To what I said was a marquee game when we started. You just saw it. The senior Stacy Poole makes the basket. The Gators win, and Florida basketball has risen to another level. What's Scott Stewart makes the pass to Stacy. He knows he had a lot of patience, Larry, as he turned with the basketball. Time was running out, but he turned. Look at Coach Kruger. Boy, is he happy coming off that bench. He knows what a big win. Picks Scott Stewart up and hugs him. Look at that emotion between those two guys. 
Coach Kruger, the point guard for Kansas State in his career, hugs the Gators' point guard, and Florida wins. The Florida Gators 62, the Vanderbilt Commodores 61. We will try to catch our...